to the chase, evidence-based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide Buddy, he's your peptide buddy. Hey everybody, semaglutide, a GLP-1 receptor agonist used for managing type 2 diabetes and obesity, can actually be taken by mouth in the form of rebelsis. This is an FDA-approved oral version of semaglutide, which is oftentimes and otherwise administered through injections, such as in the brand Ozempic. Now, right off the bat, before getting into the specifics, there are a few things we can postulate about the differences. One, anything taken by mouth will need to be taken more often, as oral bioavailability is going to be significantly lessened, which leads us to our second point that we can also predict the amount or volume to achieve the same effect when taken by mouth will need to be greater, especially over time. And since oral medications do have to be generally taken more often and in greater amounts, what's the trade-off? Well, that's quite obvious. Nothing's got to be injected. Oral medications often have reduced bioavailability, meaning that they may not be absorbed as efficiently as their injectable counterparts. This is why the oral form, Rebelsis, requires a different formulation and dosing regimen compared to injectable versions like Ozempic, even if the ultimate therapeutic effect or goals in the long term or short term aim to be similar or the same. So just like the injectable version that's regularly uptitrated or sequentially increased after four weeks, dose adjustments with the orally available Rebelsis are done so over a similar time frame, about 30 days or so. And what's fascinating here is that the Pioneer 4 clinical trial, a randomized, double-blinded, placebo-controlled phase 3 evaluation evaluation of oral semaglutide versus subcutaneously injected liraglutide, another GLP-1 receptor agonist that's commonly prescribed, showed pretty promising effects for those unwilling or unable to consume injectable GLP-1s. Because although adverse effects with oral semaglutide were slightly more frequent, it was found to be non-inferior to daily injections of liraglutide and superior to placebo in decreasing HbA1c and superior in decreasing body weight over for both comparators at week 26, which hints at, in this trial at least, more potent effects on body weight than an injectable GLP-1 agonist with equivalent effects more or less on glycated hemoglobin, a prominent metric of metabolic risk and a measurement of the chronicity and severity of elevated blood sugar. Now, as we'd expect, the side effect profile of rebelsis or oral semaglutide is essentially similar to that of the injectable GLP-1 receptor agonists. Gastrointestinal upset in its many forms, like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, more likely to rear its ugly head when starting or upon dose increases. Now, while injectable medications may possess fluctuating presence of adverse effects dependent on dose and when the injection is given, coupled with individual variability, you could argue that taking the daily pill is more likely to induce more consistent side effects, also likely individual dependent. The half-lives of rebelsis and the injectable variants of semaglutide are nearly equivalent at about a week as well. So I've been meaning to cover oral semaglutide for some time, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I tried my best to keep it short and sweet. If you want to learn about another up-and-coming similar medication, I recently did a video on Patreon about a non-peptide GLP-1 receptor agonist called Orphogliperon. So if you're looking for member-only videos, early releases, or just a way to further support the channel, the Patreon is where to find it. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It's the best way to help a small YouTuber like me out. And I really appreciate the time. And thank you again for watching. Watching. I hope you have a great day. Take care. Cut to the chase, evidence based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy.